We're able to keep things on track in our lives most of the time, but once in a while, you know, we get into those situations where it seems like everybody's out there just to push our buttons. What I'm going to talk to you about today is how you can actually take back control so you're not just reacting to all of that going on around you. When we're going through life, I mean, there's, there's people that annoy us and here and there, but every once in a while, you know how sometimes it seems like everyone is there to set you off, that they're just there to tick you off and annoy you and it, and it really, really pushes your buttons. And sometimes it's the same type of people, like you have, it's like you run into the same type of jerk at work every time. Um, even if you're in a different job in a different city, it's the same type of person that keeps popping up or you're in a relationship with that same type of person again. You wonder how you got there and they're doing the same things over and over and over. And so sometimes it can feel overwhelming because it's like all of these things are coming from all around you and, and really, really setting you off. Now, here's the thing, two things. Number one, if you're state of mind, if you're feeling good, is dependent on all of these other people around you. I've got to be honest with you, you're out of luck. They're not all going to change their behavior for you. So the moment you're dependent on someone outside of you, you've given up your power. So you can't change what they're doing, but you have your own reaction. That's yours. You own it. That's what you can change. And Here's a way that, that you can actually find out what's going on here because and this is the part people don't really like about this. This is what I call the mirror principle is the reason that they are setting you off, that they're triggering you in that way is because in some way they're reflecting something in you. Now, <clears throat> does that mean if you're running into a bully at work that you're bullying and so on? No, no you're not necessarily a bully, but maybe that sort of disrespect, that sort of doing the, the wrong thing you're doing to someone else. You're not respecting someone in some part of your life, or maybe you're not respecting yourself. And so if, if someone's not considerate of you, uh, are, is there somewhere, some part of your life where you're not being considered? What I found is these emotions that these, when we get reacting like this, and especially when it seems like it happens everywhere we go, there's people all around us. It's not about them because hate to tell you, there's only one person at the scene of every crime. Not to say it's a crime. It, it's not fault. It's not guilt. It's just that you are recognizing something in these other people and it's triggering you that perhaps you're doing something similar. The moment you look inside, guess what? You've got complete control over you. And it takes courage to look inside and say, where am I doing something that is along this lines? It may not be literal, but something along this lines. And you can change that. And the moment you change that, those people no longer trigger you. Like you may see that this is silly, this is annoying, this is just respectful, but it's not getting you upset. So if you've got the courage to take a look inside and see what is going on with you, what these people are showing you, that's where you've got a huge opportunity for the growth. And the biggest way we tend to sabotage ourselves is we blame others and we base our goodwill, our happiness on them changing. Sorry, folks. The truth is it ain't going to happen. Now, if you want to get the top three reasons that we sabotage ourselves, just go to metia.com. That's M-E-H, the number two, Y-E-A-H.com. And you can download uh, some free information on that. Plus a bonus uh, video I've got for you on how to totally defuse the number one cause of self-sabotage.